So, uh, welcome back. Um, gone ahead and uh, finally uh, got the turret now fully painted, uh, touched up in a couple areas to that had been missed, and now we're ready to go with our first gloss coat. Now, uh, the gloss coat is done primarily in preparation for applying decals. Um, it's also used to help protect the underlying paint coats. Now, uh, I'm going to be using all clads, uh, enamel based uh, gloss clear coat for, for this endeavor. Um, I found it to be one of the best, but I had the simple fact that you can just load in the airbrush and shoot. And alleviating the need for mixing and all that, that could potentially um, degrade the quality of the finish. So, uh, go ahead and we'll get started here. So, as you can see, again, I'm just double checking to make sure the paint's good. Uh, and as I've said with all the other parts with regards to painting, you just want to work very slowly doing using the same sort of methods as you've used before though since this is you know, going to affect the final finish of the uh, model you do want to be extra careful and as you can see here I'm using more of the basic method and I'm keeping the airbrush fairly close so I don't have to worry about um, the potential for paint drying in the air and landing on model green uh, dust effect but <clears throat> Again, as you can see, I'm also keep ch I keep checking for spots I may have missed, and you just want to keep doing this over the entirety of the uh, piece. Again, being careful not to um, put down too much paint too quickly, causing it to pool. And as you can see, we're just about done doing that. Once you do uh, get the gloss coat down, you want to let it sit for a day or two to set up and cure properly. So the OS clear coat now has had a couple days to cure and set up to ensure that we don't have any potential problems with some of the decal chemicals. And now we're ready to begin decaling. Now this kit uses uh, water ants for decals. Um, some people argue that for this type of application, dry transfers are better, but from a personal standpoint, I prefer the water slide just because I find they're easy to work with, especially when you have small detail uh, parts such as on the tank. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, um, when you're using water slide decals, you obviously are going to need a little uh, type of container of water, which see I have here. Um, ideally you want to use warm water but uh, I've had plenty of um, satisfactory results using cold water but ideally you want to use warm. So, oops, drop the decals. Now uh, when working with the water slides you do want to make sure you try and keep your hands as dry as possible so as to not uh, set off the decal. I'll working prematurely. So uh, to start with you're going to want to cut out your decal and you want to cut as far away from the decal as possible to ensure that you don't um, cut any of the decal film or the decal itself. Uh, this is mainly just to ensure that it gets a good hold and you don't damage the decal. <clears throat> there we go. Got that cut out. Uh, one more thing, uh, when you get your decals, you want to make sure uh, on check for a yellowing or any t signs of aging, as depending on the age of the kit, uh, the decals may or may not work. Um, specifically, if the carrier film has gone bad, it, you cut out the decal, put it in water, the decal will, will very quickly break apart and you'll be left with a mess. So be Always be check your decals first, and when in doubt, 
um, cut off, you know, like a little bit of this text area and such that are on a lot of decal sheets and use that as a test piece. So, now that we have our decal out, go ahead, just stick it on some tweezers and dunk it in the water for about um, 15 to 20 seconds, 30 seconds if it's a really big decal. Okay, now that that's had a chance to get plenty wet, um, now what you want to do is basically let it sit and don't do anything for at least a couple, for at least 30 seconds or more, as this will allow the water to start pulling the decal up off the paper so you can move it to the model. So I'll cut out for a second and why that we wait for that to do its thing. So the decal is now ready to begin placing. Um, for decals of this size, I actually recommend uh, weighing your fingers and just moving it on that way. Uh, for smaller ones, uh, you can, it's better to use a set of tweezers. There we go. And then for final placement, you're just going to want to use, your, again, your tweezers. And if necessary, add a little more water. And then just very, very, really gently move the decal into final position. Again, adding water as needed to help keep it up and moving. And again, if you're still having a little trouble, it doesn't hurt to use your fingers to help move it. Just let me double check the instructions. And just about have it set. Okay. And there we go. All right, now we just have to wait for this to uh, dry. Um, one thing you do want to do after you uh, get it in position, though, is uh, just lightly touch it with a paper towel to soak up the excess water. As if you don't, you can the decal can potentially move around on its own as the water dries. So it's a good idea just to dab it lightly and try not to move it but as I said once <coughs> excuse me <coughs> excuse me uh, once you do that um, you just want to let it sit and dry uh, one thing you can do why it's doing that is obviously uh, do the decals that go on the other side and work from once alternating between one side and the other as the decals dry up so uh, we're gonna go ahead uh, let that dry up and I'll do a couple more decals off camera and then I'll show you what to do next to help get a really uh, accurate looking decal uh, lay down. So the decals now have had time to set up and we can now uh, use the decal uh, softener to help give it a more realistic look. Now, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, this is actually where the argument for dry transfers come in as because you're rubbing them down into the various grooves, angles, and such. It does give you a more accurate look out the gate. However, obviously, 
because you have to you know basically tape it down it makes it harder to position so um, for when I'm doing decals I like to use uh, microsol I found it be the type of product I like so you're just going to wet your um, uh, spare paintbrush get sufficient on it and just very gently brush it on you don't want to get it too wet as it can lift up and also do it for this other decal here and once you do this you do not want to touch the decal at all you don't do anything to it just let it sit till it does its thing now you will see it start to uh, wrinkle and uh, look make it look like it's wanting to pull up but it's not it that's just the decal softener doing its thing excuse me and so yeah once you do apply it don't touch it don't do anything if it does move very carefully move it back but otherwise don't touch it at all as the decal um, becomes extremely brittle once you do this as you're in effect basically getting it so that it is welded onto the surface of the paint so uh, since we are just about out of time I'm gonna go ahead and stop here um, once I finish up with the decals we'll be go ahead to do um, first some minor weathering just to bring out detail as I had previously said with the this uh, particular build set of videos we're not going to go haywire with the weathering we're just going to do a little just to bring out the detail and make it look good otherwise it's going to basically be a tank as you would see it fairly factory fresh or under uh, parade conditions so uh, until next time then